Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit how I used Inkscape to solve a rather interesting little problem. Not, not an overly complex problem, but what it was is for one of my drone projects, I wanted to create a gimbal protector. And I'll show you a little bit about what, I was get, what I'm getting at. So a gimbal protector goes in the bottom of this to protect this very expensive assembly right here of camera and gimbal for when the copter lands or crashes. Now, don't get kind of lost that this is a drone. This, this kind of concept I'm sharing with you guys will work on, you know, basically any type of problem where you run into something like this. So the problem I ran into is the shape of these landing legs. It's actually a funny type of oval if you see this. So what what I originally decided to do is I was going to get all mathematical about this and, and solve the problem. And so what I did is I started by placing this onto a sheet of graph paper and tracing out along the legs. Now I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see. So this is the byproduct of this. So what I started doing uh, with this is I started measuring sort of rise and run here and I got thinking man this is going to be really a pain to kind of work this all back into a formula to plot what this oval is going to look like and I just didn't want to invest that much time in it so I decided you know how could I solve this problem in an easier faster way and it popped them into my mind why don't I scan this put this into Inkscape and just draw an oval that matches this and call it done and use that as my base template. So that's what I did. And I kind of wanted to walk you guys through this process a little bit. So in case you're running into something like this, you can sketch it out, scan it, put it in Inkscape, and then what I also ended <coughs> up doing, excuse me, is taking a STL or a 3D model and incorporating it in this 2D design, which I thought was really cool. So I tell you what, why don't we head over to the computer and let's take a look at it. So on this part I'm going to cover you know the Inkscape parts and then in the second part of this video in another episode we're going to actually cut it out and make the part so you can see it going from this sketch sheet to an actual real live part. So let's head over to the computer. Okay welcome back. So we're in the computer now. So what I've done is I've scanned this now. A couple tips here. I've used uh, black and white to scan this and you notice that when I trace this, I trace this with a black pen. Now you can see that I did it on graph paper, however you don't see the graph lines. You do see some of the writing I did in the pen here when I was trying to calculate the curve, but um, that really doesn't matter for what we're going to try here. So to import this, all I did is went to File, Import, and imported it. And um, I also kept this at its original scale. Now the next thing I did, is I, as I mentioned in the onset, is I created this unique oval to match the size of this. Now you'll notice over here it doesn't quite match at the bottom. Well, the legs are made out of a, like a polystyrene material and they're a bit flexible. And that's sort of the idea behind building this gimbal, is it's going to reinforce those legs. And so this will push out no problem. So I did expect a little bit of this. Now that I have this in place, what I'm going to do is you notice I have some lines, some guidelines up here, uh, because what I'll do is I'll start di uh, differencing, you know, using the path command to difference out uh, the pieces of this oval I don't uh, require. And uh, so here's the product of that. So I've now uh, differenced out the center and the tops, and I've got my general sides. Now, what I've decided to do was actually bring in a component that I found on Thingiverse rather than trying to redesign everything from um, you know the get-go. So again I'm going to go back up here I'm going to go to import and then I'm going to import this file. Now this is an SVG file which I've uh, taken and I've gotten it off Thingiverse. Actually it was an STL file and I've converted it to an SVGA and I'll show you guys how to do that in a minute. But I just kind of want to show the importation. So now I've imported that SVG file here. Now how did I get this SVG file? Well on Tinkercad I loaded the object in Tinkercad and then I simply went to export and then I went to SVG and you see it's preparing the model. Now in SVG, I'm not going to export because I've already done that, but it's going to export the STL as a 2D object when it does an SVG, so it's going to collapse any vertical structures. And with this, I really don't care because, it, you know, pretty much I'm going to cut this out on the CNC, so it's going to be a 2D object anyway. 
So as you see, I have this here, and I've kind of stretched it in the line this a little bit uh, to create this. And again, in, in the end product, I've done some further doctoring of this, and I'm not going to bore you with all that. I simply want to show you guys that you can bring this, this piece in if I don't grab the uh, center line here. So what I want to do is just kind of bring this down. And this is not going to be perfect, but again, I just kind of want to show you guys how this works. So now that I have all this in place, what I'm going to do is select it all and simply hit Path and Union, which is Control plus plus, and there we go. We have now the exact curve I need to match my legs. I've got the airfoil or anti-airfoil design, if you will, for the center here. And bada bing, bada boom, uh, I've solved the problem. So now instead of spending a whole bunch of time doing a bunch of math to do this, uh, I was able to simply sketch it out, scan it, make an oval, and, and done deal. So the actual end product is going to look more so like this, uh, because again, that gimbal, um, uh, you know, was uh, or gimbal guard was a little bit different than what I wanted, so I took it and remixed it a little bit. But here's the end product, and I also had to, uh, you know, uh, difference out a little piece here for an antenna and things like that. But as you can see, it came out uh, pretty good. So uh, again, I'm very impressed with how fast you can, uh, with these tools and, and basically free tools for the most part that you can go from design to actual product. So. Uh, you know, at this stage, we now have an SVG. I'm going to export this as an EPS, and then in the next episode, we're going to take it into our CAM program. We're going to convert it to G code, and we're going to go to the machine. We're actually going to cut this out, and we're going to have an end product to hold in our hands from a sketch that we did on a paper. Again, guys, just simply blows me away. And again, some of these are just, you know, maybe common sense tips or what have you. Uh, but anyways, felt uh, was worthwhile sharing because if you have a project like this, you want to tackle it. You don't want to invest a whole lot of time. This is a very simple way to get a complex shape into your into your program. Now, I can also import this into uh, Tinkercad or another program and extrude it vertically and 3D print it. Now, this happens to be a little bit large to 3D print. It's uh, uh, probably a little bit over 200 millimeters wide. And this is one of the reasons I'm going to go to the CNC. And the second reason is I want to do polycarbonate uh, as the material for this because I need it to be pretty strong uh, to handle you know crashes or striking other objects so again not really in tune for 3D printing but again I could take this into a 3D printing program is what I'm trying to say so anyways hey I hope you found this interesting and, and useful if you did hey please hit that thumbs up below also the subscribe button is going to be coming up over to the side please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hey we'll see you in the next video Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.